Welcome back to Anime Rumi. The members of this podcast are Lovely Lively Pink, Sakura, Your Blue Ranger Onesan Yuri, and I'm your MC, a touch of sweet and sour yellow user. We'll be hanging out with these members today, so let's get started. So, to begin our anime talk today, I wanted to ask Sakura if you had anything you wanted to share about. Um, so, I am watching Ricola's Recoil. I started it. I hate to say that I've been watching it,、um, but I just wanted to mention it because、um, was it when I went to AX, I got a、uh, from my friend, I got、uh, N Sky Kirby Paper Theater, and I was building it and just you know zoning out like <laughs> anime on putting a paper theater together. My desk lamp is at its highest brightness. Yeah, is that the name of a game, or is this a paper craft that you are building out of paper? Paper craft, paper theater.、Wow. So it's like pre laser cut, right? Into sheets of like、um, very compact cardstock. And、oh. um, I just take an X Acto knife and pull them out by like、oh. their number. And I just take little itty bitty tweezers and <laughs> little itty bitty、um, X Acto knife tip. And I just tacking glue bit by bit. I'm、wow. currently working on my fourth frame. And I had no clue when my friend got it for me that it would be the Hardest one or the hardest <laughs> level that they have. There are things that are smaller than my nail, my, my, like the tip of my fingernail.、Wow. You do need tweezers. Like, yeah, it's a lot of work. But I was thinking, because I have friends who are like retweeting like the voice actresses, like doing cute things together, like doing poses from the anime. And I was just like, oh, I can roll with that. I can watch it. And so I put it on, not paying attention, thinking it was going to be a cutesy idol anime. She's like, oh yeah, Tokyo is so peaceful. Tokyo is so wonderful. And then I hear boom, boom. And then I'm like, wait, is there, are those silencers? And I hear bullets tinkling around. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so I drop my tweezers, put everything down, and skip back like three, 30 seconds. And I watch the scene over again. And she's just like, yeah, Japan is wonderful. Japan is very.、Um, Peaceful. There's nothing wrong. Nothing happens here. Everything's good. And these girls, they're just taking people out left and right. And I'm like, oh my God. Are these girls just moderators of Japan? Like, are they, are they Discord mods of Japan right now? And I was just like, floored. And like,、um, you know,、uh, what is it? I thought it was when it, when it went that way. I was just like,、oh, okay, that, well, this is just going to be a dirty pair show. Because I do like, like the dirty、uh, like, pair show. It's a really good show back in the day. But、um, yeah, because my dad used to compare me and my sister to them、um, when we would go around getting into trouble or whatever. So very weird family dynamics I have here、um, <laughs> being compared to anime as a child.、Um, but yeah, so the show I thought was going to run that way. But I really like. The girls' dynamic. Just off the first episode, you're like, well, one's the straight laced one that's always going to follow the rule, one's the one that's actually <laughs> doing it. And then you kind of figure out that the, the, like the, the not so serious one is the one doing the job right. And the, then the very serious one's the one, you know, she's like gunslinger girling it everywhere and just like shooting things and not. Taking care of the people around her or whatever, but she did in the first episode or like the first few minutes. So I was just like, it's gonna be a ride and I'm ready for it. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen a really good show like showcasing,、um, for lack of a better term, gun violence with pretty girls, pretty high school girls in a while. So <laughs> <laughs> I think, guns and、uh, girls. yeah, guns and girls. <laughs> It's a, it's a good combination when it's done by creators with an interesting point of view. Yeah. Like to add something extra.、Like、Dirty Pair is great because there's so much good comedy、mm-hmm. and、um, large scale property destruction. Those are two <laughs> of the ingredients that made Trigon, which、um, I also adore, such a success. <laughs> so, sounds like fun. So, thank you for sharing the Caressor Coil with us today. Um, make sure to check it out if you haven't already, and I'll definitely be looking into it as well. So, currently, I'm in like a lounge workspace at the Pony Canyon. So, we have a very big senpai here. Can I have a little bit of your time? <laughs> so, may I ask what your name is? 
つぼいと言います。つぼいさん、ナイスミッチメッセージ、つぼい。So I wanted to ask a couple of questions. I hope that's alright. 何個か質問しても大丈夫ですか、はい、今、最新のやっている作品は何ですか ?What is your latest work right now? 最近やっていた作品は、えー、と大正乙女おとぎ話という作品で、はい、英語名だと「大正乙女フェアリーテール」あはい知ってます、はい、を担当していました、はい、日本の大正時代100年前の舞台にしたアニメになっていて、はい、日本の古き良き時代の恋愛物語になっています、はいはい、The latest work that he's worked on is 大正乙女フェリーテール。And、um, he says that it's a wonderful story. It's set 100 years ago in the 大正 era in Japan. And it shows a very lovely and yet cultural view and romantic aspect of the 大正 era. Can I ask why you joined the Pony Canyon? I'm a little bit of 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 まあ、アニメに携われる会社に入りたいなと思った中で、はい、自分の好きなアニメをこの会社がやっていたので目指しましたはい、はいはい、So he says that he's liked anime ever since he was a student he's always wanted to work on something related to it and Pony Canyon was making something that he had liked at the time and so that's why he had made this place as a goal えっとじゃあ最後の質問はアニメを好きになったきっかけのアニメは何ですか。広角機動隊。What was the anime that led to your fascination or interest in anime? And he said the Ghost in the Shell. Thank you very much for your time. ありがとうございました。Thank you. Thank you. ミカンのオタカツダイアリー。So, we'll be doing another card talk today where we randomly pick a card numbered one through five. And each of these cards have different topics that will direct our next talk. So, which card should we choose this time? Let's see. We can all put a finger out and then we can add them all up to see which number we get. Oh, sure. That sounds <laughs> fun. And if, it's, and if it's a big number, then we'll add the two digits until we get a number that we can use. Okay? Okay. So, let's choose number five. Yay. Okay. One, two, two, five. Yeah. So today's theme is. Drum roll, please. Bum, ba, ka, bum. Your favorite anime character voice. Oh. So, your favorite Seiyu.、Mm. I don't want to be too predictable. It's okay. <laughs>、um, Go for it. You know, it's Maya Sakamoto.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> But、um, the role that. First brought her to my attention、uh, was her role in The Vision of Escaflone as Hitomi, the main character, who is、um, a high school girl who unknowingly,、um, through a coincidence and a mysterious pendant she has, opens a portal to another world, a sort of like feudal. Fantasy type, but also sort of like Jap Japanese esque setting.、Mm. First, she brings a prince from that world into the modern world and the dragon. And no sooner does he defeat it than the portal opens again and takes her away to his world this time.、Mm. Um, so much more happens. Amazingly, it's an isekai series. It's also,、mm. although it was an anime original, it's really like a shoujo. Show and feel more than anything.、Mm. Um, because the protagonist is this like very strong willed, but you know, thoughtful and sometimes indecisive and weak,、uh, yet good hearted、uh, female protagonist、mm. surrounded by you know, royal intrigue and like wars between kingdoms. and Um, you know, there's a love triangle, there's it's beautiful looking, there's、mm -hmm. and there's mechs, there's giant robots. It's a giant robot <laughs> show. The cherry on top mechs.、Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, could you give the name of the anime one more time? Sure, it's better known as Escaflone,、oh. uh, Escaflone in Japanese. So, my s a k a m o t o s first major starring role. Was as Hitomi in The Vision of Escaflone. When she、mm. recorded the dialogue for it, she herself was 16 years old, the same as Hitomi.、Wow. 
Wow. So it's a beautifully true to life performance. You know, the hesitation and the fear in her voice when she's concerned over one of the new people she's met and grown close to who are often, you know, going into war, ending up horribly injured, getting kidnapped, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And like the more gentle scenes when she's opening up and, you know, like getting to know people, like the happiness she shows. And um, she also has a tarot card reader, so she'll do a tarot card reading to open oh. every episode. She'll draw a card and talk a little about the meaning of the card and how it might relate to... The... She has visions of things that are going to happen shortly in the future. Mm. So... Like um... That's so Raven kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Loki. <laughs> in the original, that's so Raven. Yeah, but then... <laughs> It's the performance that made me really develop, like, my love for her as a fan that spanned mm -hmm. the many, many years since Escaflone came out. And she also sings the opening theme and several other songs for the show, and it's beautiful. But um, she herself loves one of the songs from Escaflone so much, uh, called the Empty Your Pockets, that she sings it as her final encore at almost all her concerts. Um. So I think it's something that's also very important to her. But um, she's wonderful in many films, but Escaflone is like something really special, because I think like the character she was performing was so close to who she was in real life at the time. But she was able to like make a realistic performance in a very much a fantasy setting. Mm. And made it really memorable. Suck it up. Do you want to go next? Oh, oh okay. So I have two seiyus that I really, really like. Um, the first one is uh, Chiba Chiemi, Harukaze Doremi from Ojama Jo Doremi. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, she's, a main, uh, she's a main character and the main voice actress, um, but she's also been in Rose and Maiden, which is one of my favorite go to oh, animes right. when I was a kid. She was Kira Kisho. Um, I forget how to say it like, properly oh, yeah. in Japanese. Um, she was in there. She's um, also one of my favorite um, Pokemon shorts that they do, like on the Japanese Pokemon Kids channel where they like do all the nursery rhymes and stuff from time to time they'll release poketunes um that are really high production and stuff like the um the recent pokemon shorts they do i forget the name of it like something snow something darkness or something like that mm -hmm. um but she voices like a teeny tiny character in that one um with a gengar um so that's like one of my favorite um things she's also pokemon technically um you know she's been in so many things um and she's been a lot of like supporting roles um so it's like one of those things when like i'm watching something and i'm just chilling watching it and then boom i hear her voice and i'm like oh my god yes it's her <laughs> um so yeah that's uh she's one of my favorites um one that i like that is a more recent person is uh kurosawa tamuyo mm. um, oh yes yeah so like i before has a great voice also yeah wonderful Nuanced yeah, she's like a wonderful person. She's a wonderful like voice actress. For a long time, I wasn't really into idol culture because I always kind of took it as like a millennium blue. Was it deep blue? Mm -hmm. What is that? What is that movie what, where it's about idol culture and stuff? Perfect blue. Oh, Perfect no. blue. That one. Yeah. So like I I had seen that and I was just like, oh my god, it's toxic. Oh my god, it's toxic. These girls. <laughs> and so I never got into <laughs> I never got into idol culture because I was just like, oh, oh my god. god. I, um, I, well, I love Perfect Blue. Um, I don't think it's that bad in real life. At least I <laughs> hope not. Where there's like regular. <laughs> assault and murder and horrible you know, mind you i did watch it as a as a tween i watched it as a tween so i was just like oh, this yeah. is the world nothing is gonna change it is nothing <laughs> different from what i'm seeing in front of me right now and i just took it and ran in my brain um but um i came across her um and i was noticing her and like stuff and like a lot of things and yeah she's just really cool and i i think she's like one of like newer upcoming voice actresses that I've noticed and like mm -hmm. um, liked the idea of yeah. not the like uh, I, hate, I hate saying it but like so that's is not the right word um, like 
you see them grow and you see them oh, go and get yeah. bigger bigger roles because mm-hmm. i liked her from yuki you know right and then mm-hmm. um from there she was like in yudu camp she's like one of the main characters in that um I she's like in her. sound euphonium yeah i like her role as sothis too in fire emblem mm-hmm. so she's like done a lot of different oh. things that like both anime and video games mm-hmm. so. and my all-time favorite role for her was um mm-hmm. hoseki no kuni land of the yeah. lustrous she's a main character in that one and i had watched the whole show through thinking like wow this voice actress is great this is great <laughs> and then i go look back at the things so i'm like oh my god it's your girl it's her <laughs> she's like oh my god she's doing great and she's also in bang dream and stuff <laughs> and is it do you have somebody you hold near and dear to your heart yes um i always think of ishida kira-san like I always can tell exactly when it's his voice. Like, I know who this is. Like, as soon as I, like, hear it, mm. I'm like, no. Um, I really like his role. I think the first role that I really enjoyed was Natori-san from Natsume Yujincho. Mm. But he's also done the voice for um, Kaoru Evangelion. Oh. Also, um, Katsura from Gintama. <laughs> and then... Katsura, don't tell that. Katsura, <laughs> <laughs> and then one of my favorite um, roles is Ella Davis from FF14, the video game. But I really like, it's like a really unique voice. I don't know how to mm-hmm. describe it, but like, you can totally tell when it's him. You always then, know him instantly. He's instantly. a great actor, unadaptable, but his voice is super distinctive. He's yeah. like Rei Hisakawa, who yeah. just, you'll never mistake her for anyone else. She really like leaves, he really has his own like distinctive mm-hmm. mark. I also like Toki Shunichi. He's like a singer as well, but um, mm. he's Kazutora in Tokyo Revengers. Oh, oh! Mm-hmm. And oh. then, um, <laughs> my and spicy then I, boy. And then <laughs> I like his role as Ginji from Kakuriyo Bed and Breakfast for a Spirit. Oh. I don't know if you've seen that, but he's like the, yeah. the fox. I, he's my favorite character. Um, and then also he does like uh, I play A3. Right, so then he's mm-hmm. Yurika Wayuki, one of the hey, characters nice. in A3. Mm-hmm. He's also a part of Paradox Live, so he's like in everything that I'm really into. So it's really cool. And then just lastly, there's a say I know everyone knows about. It's Mia no Mamoru. You know, oh, he's like yeah. kind of iconic. <laughs> Another ultra mm-hmm. ultra distinctive voice. Yeah. And he sings really well, too. <laughs> they all sing yes, really well. Music, yeah. Right. I don't know. It's like the when you, when you have, like, that really beautiful voice, that, like, ikue. Mm-hmm. Ikebo. Uh, as the fans like to say, you know, mm-hmm. I think it's natural to sing. Yeah, so some of his roles include Osamu Dazai from Bungo Stray Dogs, mm-hmm. and then Matsuoka Rin from Free. Ooh. And, like, <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, was he um Iketeru Nisa? Mm-hmm. Oh, I love From Iketeru Nisa. Iketeru Nisa. I, yeah, and then he sings this um <laughs> like opening and stuff too. It's great. The ending is like really good too. The oh ending is my, my favorite. God. I love I love him and that character though. Him and his like dirty jokes. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great. And I think he's a little bit like the Cary Grant of the Seiyu world because he's, even in real life, he's very handsome and he often gets he the human characters, but he's mm. very, very funny. <laughs> he has great comic timing. He plays comic roles, especially like, you know, the handsome but oblivious guy is a role he's played a lot and it's mm. just like always such a good time at um, but he can also do like a straight heroic role with mm-hmm. like I didn't you know, <gasps> oh my trying to be funny, but he's all the more funny. Like um Star Driver, which is a wonderfully hammy mecha show mm-hmm. uh in which he's a character called the Galactic Pretty everyone calls him the Galactic <laughs> Pretty Boy. Every time he appears on screen, he or someone else yells Ginga Bishonen. <laughs> 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 I think you come to identify a say you love with one particular role. Um, he's great and he's versatile, but he's he'll always be the king of shonen to me. Mm, yeah, so that was our topic for today, and we had a lot to say about it because I think we all have a lot of favorite <laughs> um, anime voices. But make sure to check back with us for the next card talk. So 
today we got to talk about our favorite anime voices and voice actors. Please check out our website and Twitter account. And don't forget to tweet us your questions, comments, and suggestions for future topics at hashtag AnimeRumi. And we'd also really like to hear who your favorite voice actors are as well. So please tweet us there. We could talk about it all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so please feel free to engage us about this. Thank you for joining us today at AnimeRumi. And we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, Rumi. Bye-bye, Rumi. Bye-bye, Rumi. Bye-bye, Rumi.